song that, that the Lord put on our hearts. And you know, I was just thinking, um, I don't know if you've ever seen that uh, time management thing. We put the big rocks in the bottom, and then we put the little rocks in, and then and you pour water. And I was just thinking, you know, what we need is God's grace to fill all the cracks. Because there are times when we just can't do it by ourselves. We need, well, there are all the times, right? All the time. We can't do it by ourselves. We're not designed to do it by ourselves. We're designed to do it through Him. And so I need His grace to flow over me, His mercy and His power and His salvation to just flow through me so that what I am is Him. And that's what I project to the world is I'm alive for Him. And, you know, when we have some, some bad times, right? I mean, there's the world right now is in a state of crisis, and it will be. You know, the Bible tells us that we are here for a short time and that our home is in heaven. And we pray for peace. We pray for world peace. And we're going to get it one day. He's going to create a new heaven and a new earth, and he is going to come and reign as the, the ruler of the nations. And that's when we're going to have perfect peace. Until then, what we have
good. All the time. That is so true. Y'all smile, man. You're going back to sleep. Everybody's quiet this morning. I, I tell you, Brother Wallace, where do you get to? But he's hiding in the corner. Oh, wait, you can have a chance to go back this. You're in the corner. That's what happens. I tell you what, we look forward to the, when you guys call. Loretta, thanks so much for having us back. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's just been an exciting week for us all together. I was telling Brother Wallace, she, I, I won't go into detail, but you just wouldn't believe what God has done just this week in our group. Two things that we've been praying for for two years and just waiting patiently, God answered. Did he not only answer those, but he went above and beyond that. And we didn't deserve any, but God is so good. I'm looking forward to your revival. I'm looking forward to seeing what goes on. I, last time, um, Loretta, I, I texted her. She probably got tired of me texting. I texted her, oh, how, how's it going? What's going on? Who's come? I'm interested. I want to see churches on fire for God. I want to see people on fire. If there's ever been a time in our life that we need to be on fire for God, it's right now. Amen. You look at the TV. You read the news, and, and I know that it's disheartening. But I'm excited to see what God's going to do. We've already seen Him do some things. And um, I want you to just this week, I want you to really concentrate on what God wants for you in your life. What he wants you to do in your family, what he wants you to do as a husband, as a wife, as a, as a teenager, as a son, as a daughter, but also as a child of God. What does he want you to do this week? Where does he want Friendship Church of the Brethren to be on Thursday and Friday after this is over with this week? So come with a desire. The first song we've done, seek, pray, expect. We need to get up each day of our life. And we need to be seeking and praying and expecting God to do great things. Amen? Amen? If we don't expect it, why would He do it? If we're not appreciated for what He's doing, why would He do it? We must be thankful. I, I saw something this week, Brother Watts, that said, what if God only blessed you with today what you thanked Him for yesterday? I got to thinking about that. And I got ashamed. What did you thank God for this morning when you got up? Today is a day of, the first day of a meeting this week, as we like to call it in the South, our revival. But wouldn't it be a blessing to be truly revived this week? To have your life revived for Christ? Well, I'm going to tell you just in a moment who we are. And I, because I, last time we were here, somebody said, you didn't introduce the group. I said, well, would you know when they left? Well, probably not. But I want to introduce the group anyway because I don't want you coming up going, we don't know who they are. So I'm going to tell you who they are, and if you can remember, great, because uh, sometimes I have trouble doing that. I've been around them for 20 years. But uh, this morning from Jonesville, North Carolina, always with us, always willing to play. Dan Langford on our keyboard does a fantastic job. Back beside Dan on the uh, finger style guitar you hear, he does a little different than what I do here in just a few moments. Uh, but on the finger style, thumb picking style, Jeff Moore from right here in Bill Street. Over here to my, your right, my left, is uh, John Worth. John does our drums, he sings, he also plays the bass. Uh, many of you may have seen John or worked with John. He's been in the school system for years, uh, was a principal for years. So uh, if you're one of his students come up, I know he'd love to see you. Make him feel old, okay? Yeah. Uh, down in the front, here on the mandolin, is uh, Angela and I's oldest son, Cameron. Uh, Cameron graduates from ASU this year, and we're so proud of him. And then across from Cameron, wave your hand the pie, is our youngest, Caleb. He is not the shortest. He is uh, probably as tall as Cameron now. Uh, when we started coming here, Loretta, these guys were about this tall four years ago. We found that Miracle Road does a miracle. <laughs> So does beef and chicken. Uh, they eat enough of it to weight gold, but uh, uh, both these boys are just, they, they, they make us proud. Uh, they have been part of our ministry ever since they were, well, before they could walk and in diapers. They didn't realize it. They were laying on the front pew of the church. Uh, but that's just the way we see the God. We gave them to God, and God has chosen to use them. Caleb does a fine job. He'll be coming in just a few moments to sing then next here in the, in the lead area of our group, 
is uh, my wife, Angela. Uh, we have been together now, will be 24 years in June. And, uh, and actually, eight years prior to that date. Uh, but all those years, I have been blessed to be beside her in ministry. And I wouldn't change it for anything in this world. She does a beautiful job. Next to her is her mom, my mother-in-law, the only one I have, the only one I want, is Sharon Warren. Uh, Sharon does our our vocals, too, does some of the harmony, some of the lead, and then you'll see her sometimes around the tape table, or sorry, CD table. I still, too many years in this, I still refer to them as tapes, but the CD table, she does some of that. Then next to her is Gary Warren. Hey, Gary, you've seen Gary many times, why don't you know him? But Gary does the low stuff. All the bottom end ground, and it's coming from that corner. And then uh, he he also helps with a lot of the stuff that goes on. But this week, an answer to a prayer for two years, we've been looking for a sound person. And this morning, back in the back, I'd like to introduce you to someone. Jody, would you raise your hand? Mr. Jody Brown, back in the back. Everybody give Jody a hand. <laughs> Jody, uh, Jody joined us today. It's his first day. Uh, he did not want to be up front and center where we are, so he chose the back corner along with the back rows. And, uh, but Jody runs our sound from back there, and uh, he's doing a fantastic job this morning. Just a, a position that we really needed, and we prayed that God would send the right person, and we feel that he has. And Jody, we're so glad to have you with us this morning. Uh, but then, uh, my name my name is Scotty, and I'm Angela Rutgers, husband. But it may be Scotty Rudd. Uh, but uh, I tell you what, I'm blessed. Most of these guys, we've all been together. Jeff and I have been together over 21 years. And uh, I would have it no other way. I love what we do. I, I thank God every morning. Because I don't want God to take it away the group. I thank God every morning for these guys. Women, men, our churches that support us and send us. And allow us to do what we do. And use the talents that God gave us. Now, you sit there and say, well, I can't do what you can do. You can do what we do. But Jesus, the question is, will you do what we do? God needs people in his churches to pray. He needs people in his churches to clean. He needs people in his churches to cook. He needs people in his churches just to smile when you go out that door and say, I'm thinking about you this week. We all have special talents. We all have special things that we can do. And it's all for the glory of God. This next song, we're going to dip back in time a little bit. Uh, as you know, and you've seen us in, in the services, we try to do a little bit of mix of songs all through the ages so that it, it really ministers to each one. But this next one's an old one. It's called Glory Road.
throne room of God. We don't have to go through anybody else. We don't have to do anything special. What we do is we pray to our Father in heaven, and he hears us. someone you can't understand. Always to the Lord. I'm so thankful for that direct line. The direct power line. In the last year we've had to use it several times. We pray daily but there's been times in the past year and I look across the congregation and I know there's been times that you 
had to do the same this year. Isn't it good to know that we have a God who cares? A God that loves you. To send his only son just for you. If you'd have been the only one on earth, he would have done it just for you. I'm amazed. Brother Wallace, I, I think back in October last year, we got to sing at a church. And we were standing there on the front porch of that church and we were looking at those <laughs> leaves as they changed. And I got to thinking about it. Folks, if this don't bring revival, nothing does. The same God that created that mountain is the God that I pray to. The same God that directed Noah to build an ark is the God that listens to me when I'm whining and crying about something. The same God that took Moses and led those children and, and provided for them is the same one that I call on each night to say, Lord, what do I do? Isn't that something? Isn't that something to know that the same God that we read about in the Bible and all these Bible people is the same God that you speak to. If he can lead them for 40 years and not fail them, he can bring revival to you, to your church. He can touch your body. He can mend your broken heart. And he can direct you. You say, why do you know? Because we serve the I Am.
while I have worn on tie. So in the middle of the storm swirling around us, the great I am is holding on to me. And let me tell you about that. Let me tell you about my Jesus. <clears throat> and what happened to us last night and when we were put in the hospital. Just about four or five weeks ago, I had a real good friend, a real good friend, a 
good pastor here in the county, got up and was sick on Sunday morning. He was so sick that his wife took him to the hospital before church. Just in a few hours, they put him in an ambulance and they rushed him to Baptist. Wasn't sure what he was doing. His platelets were basically zero. It didn't look good. But do you know, let me tell you about my Jesus. Over the last few weeks, as I texted him each day, he continued to praise God for where he was at and what was going on. About to die. Not sure what's going on. Not sure what's going to happen. They couldn't tell him what was going on. They couldn't find where the blood was going. They couldn't tell why the platelets were down. All they knew was it's not good. This gentleman is early 40s. Young wife. Scared to death. Not sure. But every day he was telling people about his Jesus. You see, when you've got Jesus in your heart, it changes your outlook in life. It changes your perspective. Yes. Death is just a thing. It's reality. But it's not the end. It's simply the beginning. The troubles that you go through changes your platform. The cancer. The issues at home. The issues at work. Sometimes the issues in church. Those issues are allowed to happen so that God can just show you just how big He really is. And how small and find out your problems are. We've got a great God. I want to tell people about my Jesus. I've experienced things in the last year that I don't want anybody to experience. But you know, Wallace, I wouldn't change them. Because in those weeks, I watched God change my life. He put it in perspective that life is short. Don't waste a moment. If God lays somebody in your heart at a gas pump, stick your head around there and say, hey, I just want you to know I don't know you, but I'm praying for you. It's not important what their name is. God knows he put, you on, he put them on your heart. But let me tell you about my Jesus. 1986, first Saturday night in October, at uh, White Oak Baptist Church. The pastor had been preaching all week on Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leadeth me in green pastures. You see, the Lord takes care of us. That night, I heard the call from the Lord. And Jesus said, Come. A big, strapping, six-foot pastor. A mountain of a man. You know, you've heard of sometimes when somebody shouts, you hear the rattle and the windows. And that's what it was. But you know, he didn't get a hold of me that night. The Lord used a four-foot-seven, four-foot-eight little lady, his wife. With a sweet disposition, walked up, and all she did was put her hand on mine. And I went to the altar. This week, if God calls you to speak to someone, don't you dare sit in your pew. He may be trying to use you to start revival in your church. Don't forsake what the Lord has for you in your life. Say yes. Here I am. Send me. I'll touch them. I'll pray for them. I'll go with them. I'll call them. What is God trying to do in your life? You see, this next psalm says, I got saved. You see, that night I bowed and I gave my life to Christ. I wouldn't change it. <coughs> see, people make fun of me. Yeah, they do, but that's okay. Remember the, the story? I've read the back of the book. I win. Make fun all you want. I know the man who created you. You see, our job is to endure those things. And our job is to go out and share the love of Christ. What's your salvation story? When's the last time you shared it? And have you told someone about Jesus? Have you shared your Jesus story with someone? 
If today's not, if you've not, today's the day. Share that. If you've never accepted him, today's the day. Don't wait. We have no promise of tomorrow. I don't want to scare anyone, but what's going on in Ukraine could easily go on right here. You say there's no way. Really? Three years ago, I stood right here and told you, oh, told you, there's no way that they would shut this world down. But they did because of the virus. We have no promise of tomorrow. Don't waste what God has given you today. When is your time? What is your story? Do you have a salvation story? Listen to this angel say, sings, I got saved.
Church, when you get to a point that Jesus is enough, church changes. Your focus changes. It's not about you. It's not about this community. It's not about the community. It's about what the Lord needs in your life. John's going to be ready to come. He's going to do one last song. I want you to stand with us, if you will. This, this song that he's going to do is called God's Been Good. I'm, here to, I'm, I'm standing here this morning trying to tell you I know that there's people here that may be facing some things in life. But God's been good. You see, through my sickness, God was good. He provided. He provided that strength from one day to the next. He provided that direction from one day to the next. He provided the doctors that had the knowledge to help. And you know what? Even if it had turned out different, brother, my God has been good. Listen to me this morning. You're sitting here. And I want you to understand that God doesn't have to do anything. He's done everything for you. But He does things because He loves you. He does things because He wants you to reach people for Him. What are you doing? What is your Jesus story? And have you told anyone about Jesus lately? You see, we've all got a story. Each one of us that is a child of God has a story to be told. And that story cannot be refuted by anyone. They can't say it's not true. They can't say, no, you don't, you don't see it that way. You know what God done, did in your life. Undoubtedly, there's people sitting here today that may have had cancer in their life. You're here. God's being good. Amen? Amen? Your church doors are still open every Sunday morning. Amen? Amen. Lord, God's being good. There are churches across this nation that don't have anyone in their congregation this morning because of the virus or whatever. God has been good to the Friendship Church of the Brethren. Brother Wallace, talking to you and your precious wife last time we were here. Through your accident, God's been good at me. He's provided each and every day. If there's food in the refrigerator and on your table, He's provided. If there's gas in your tank, no matter what it costs, He provided it. Amen? Stand with me this morning. Revival starts with you. So here's my question. As we sing this last song, what do you need to come and just lay down? We'll move. Hit these front rows. If you want to see revival in your church this week, maybe you just need to come and say, Lord, here it is. I don't want to deal with this this week. Maybe some financial in your life. I don't know what it is. But maybe you just need to look and say, I don't want to deal with this this week. I want you to have priority in my life this week. Change my way change my outlook, change my life. If you come and you'll do that and you let God change your life for one week, you'll never go back to where it was. When you depend solely upon Him, the blessings are far, far outweigh anything else that goes on. So this week, maybe you just need to come as we say. Maybe there's someone here that's meant something to you over the years and you have told them. Maybe they need to hear that this morning. As we sing, would you go to that person and just hug that person and just tell them, say, look, I love you and I'm praying for you. Whatever it is, now is the time. You want revival in your church? What are you willing to do? What are you willing to give up? Because God says, give it up and I'll give it to you. Are you willing to lay it down to say for my church, my family, my personal life, I will provide. If God's been good, give him honor today.